Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and welcome back to What the Funk. In the last episode, we went over how to connect to an Ethereum node using the Go programming language. In this episode, we're going to take it a step further and interact with a smart contract that's already been deployed to the Ethereum blockchain. Let's get into it. So in this example, we're going to use an already deployed ERC-20 token. Um, in this case, we're going to use the Tron token or Tronix, T-R-X. So you can see the source code uh, for that token right here. All I did was copy and paste it from the original uh, source code. And you can see the source code is right here. All you got to do is look up Tron and tokens and then come down here to the contract source and hit copy. So that's all I did. So what we need to do is make it so that we can interact with this smart contract through the Go programming language. So first thing you're going to need to do is make sure you have your Go environment installed and configured for your operating system. I won't go over that in this video. The next thing we need to do is install the Go Ethereum library and you can do that with this command. So go get uh, dash u for update um, and then the full path for the Go Ethereum library. Next, we need to go into where our Go library has been installed. So CD, um, use the Go path because that um, varies depending on your system. And finally, we need to compile the dev tools. So we'd run the command make. Uh, at at stands for wait until this is done. Um, if it succeeds, go ahead and run this next command. So make dev tools. So what that's going to do is give us a binary called ABI gen and we're going to use this to basically compile this solidity file and then create a go file that we can actually use as part of our overall application to interact with the uh, smart contract on the blockchain last thing we need to do is install uh, the Solidity Compiler, or S-O-L-C, SOLC. We can do that by going over to solidity.readthedocs.io, clicking on Installing the Solidity Compiler, and then scrolling down to your particular operating system under Binary Packages. So it has instructions for installing on Ubuntu, uh, and instructions for installing on Macintosh, um, building from source, um, and then you can also um, look at how you do install it through Windows. I won't cover that in this video. You'll just have to go to one of the instructions um, down here. I will post this link in the description down below, um, and then you can figure out how to install that. Once we have the Solidity compiler installed, we can use the ABI Gen tool to compile this contract um, and then create a Go file for use within our program. So, in order to do that, we use ABI Gen, and then the command line option sol, and then give it the name of the file. In this case, uh, it should be tron token.sol. Uh, then we give it the package. So, if you're familiar with Go, everything has to be uh, inside a package. Um, there must always be a main package for your program. So we're just going to put it in the main package. Uh, and then we give it an output. And we're just going to call it token.go. So now we should have a file called token.go. So once you open up this file, you'll see a bunch of stuff that's been auto-generated for you. So you've got the ABI representation of the contract, you've got the binary representation of the contract, and you've got a bunch of useful utility functions and types and variables um, that you can use in your Go programs to actually interact with the contract. We won't go over everything, we'll just go over a couple of things when we actually build um, our small little program. So as you can see, I've got a somewhat empty main.go file 
created here and I've imported a couple of things that we're going to need. So first we're going to need an Ethereum client. This will help us to connect to a node in order to interact with the already deployed contract. Um, we've imported the common package which has some useful things and the bind package which also has some useful things. And we'll just go through this step by step. The first thing we're going to want to do is create a connection to the Ethereum node we're gonna work with. In this case, we're gonna use Infura like we did in the last video. So we're gonna need a connection variable. We're gonna check for errors. And we're gonna use the ethclient.dial method. And then we're just gonna type in HTTPS. And then we're just gonna to connect to the Infura mainnet. Then we're gonna check if there's an error. If there's an error, or if error is not equal nil, which is standard in Go, we're just gonna log that and then quit. Because that is something we need to work. And then we'll just go ahead and log the actual error. So that should cover that. The next thing we're gonna do is build up an instance of our token contract. Now we've already put it in the same package, um, package main, and uh, there was a useful utility function called neutron token. So basically, we're gonna take uh, an instance of that contract and save it into this contract variable using the neutron token function. So neutron token, and it's gonna take an address. So we're gonna use the common uh, package and then hex to address. Basically this will take a hex string um, and then convert that to an address type which is uh, used underneath everything to um, work with the Ethereum libraries. So we're just gonna take the uh, actual Tron address as it is deployed on the mainnet. So if you wanna get this address, just go to Etherscan, look up Tron, and look up the contract address because that's exactly where I copied this from. And then the next thing we need to pass this is our um, newly created Ethereum connection. So we have that. Once again, we're going to check for errors. If the error is not equal nil, we're gonna log that. So we've logged that. So the final step is we're gonna actually call a method on the already deployed contract. So an easy method to call would probably be the balance of method. And basically that you pass it an address and then you give it, or it returns the balance of tokens for that address. So we're gonna store that in a variable called AMT or amount. In this case, we're just gonna be lazy, not care about um, any sort of errors. And then we're gonna use the contract that we created, call the balance of, and it's gonna take what are called call options, but we're not gonna pass any options at this point because we don't need to. Um, usually you would pass something like the from address or some other options depending on what that method takes, but in this case it takes none, so we're gonna basically pass an empty call ops object And then we're gonna pass an address. And this is just a random address that I pulled from Etherscan. If you look up any token contract on Etherscan, it'll give you a tab that says token holders, and it'll give you a list of all the addresses that actually hold those tokens. So all I did was copy um, an address from Etherscan, and we're gonna put that in there. So once we have that saved to our variable, 
we're just going to print that out. We're going to print the amount and it should just show up in our console. So let's save this. So in our console, we're going to run go run main.go. And because our token code is stored in a separate file, we actually need to pass the, uh, that file as well. Otherwise, the Go compiler is going to complain. So go run main.go and then pass token.go. And when we run that, it should give us back a balance. And it did. And you can see the balance right here. And that's it. You can actually do a lot more with this. Uh, like I said before, the ABI Gen tool generates a lot of the boilerplate for you. Depending on the smart contract you have deployed to the blockchain, it will go ahead and generate all of those methods that are included in the smart contract that you created. So just use your imagination and uh, go ahead and start creating some interesting dApps using the Go programming language. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video.